Hi, my name is Steve James, and welcome back to this audio class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 356, The Beginning, the first three chapters of Genesis, part four. In this episode, we're going to look at the details of the fall of Adam. We will clearly see how God started the plan of redemption for all mankind. We will learn about some of the changes that happened to the earth from its idyllic, perfect Garden of Eden to the one we see now with thorns and thistles and very hard labor. Uh, Another question that comes up is, who did Adam and Eve's children marry? And go to Genesis chapter 5 verse 4. It's really a simple answer, but it's a good question. There's no such thing as a silly question. 5-4, and it says, And the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. So Adam and Eve had lots of sons and daughters. I mean, if you live for 800 years, you might have some. So who did they marry? Well, they married their brothers and sisters. I mean, who else was left? I mean, who else could they? Who else could they marry? But you got to remember one thing: that blood was purer then. It was pure. That's why they could live for 800 years. That's pretty neat. Let's continue reading Genesis chapter two, verse eight. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there He put man, whom He had formed, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food and a tree of life also in the midst of the garden the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and a river went out of the Eden to water the garden from whence it was parted and it became into four heads excuse me four heads the name of the first was Pison that it, that it is which compasses the whole land of there is where there is gold and the gold of that land is good there is a tabellium and the onyx stone and the name of the second river is Gilhon and the, the same is, is that uh, compasses the whole land of Ethiopia and the name of the third river is Hydekel that is it which goeth towards the east of Syria, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. And the Lord God took man and put him in him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. He gave Adam a little little job to do. He said, Here you go, give him something to do. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. God said, Hey, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. And that that word that wording there, thou mayest freely eat, in the in the Greek is eating ye may eat, and they translated it free, thou thou freely eat, just to show how freely eating you may eat. And then verse seventeen, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die, and thou shalt surely die is dying that thou wilt die. You will surely die. Thou ain't dying, thou wilt die. In verse 18, the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a help help me. And that word help me here, you get a a real good picture of what a wife is to a man is a help me. Someone to help him in the things that he's doing in his life. A help me. I like that. It's the word of God. And out of the ground of the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. See, Adam named all the animals. So he, that's what he named them. But they had a great fellowship Adam had with uh, with God. They had great fellowship. So... Here comes this animal, you know, 
Adam says, well, God, what do you think? He says, well, let's call that a bow weevil. He says, okay, it's a bow weevil. And another one comes on, what do you call that? He says, how about a giraffe? Yeah, a giraffe. So God and, you can see this, there was good fellowship, God and Adam, and they named the animals together. Pretty cool, huh? Adam named them every beast and fowl with God's help. They had such great fellowship. And Adam gave name to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found to help me. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and he closed up instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is my bone of my bone, and flesh of my flesh. For she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one. In Ephesians, don't have to go there, but in Ephesians 5.31, this part of Genesis is quoted there, and this section of God's Word is talking about marriage. And it's written directly out to our administration. But it still is talking about one flesh written in the opening chapters of Genesis. And let me explain this one flesh. What that means is they become almost like-minded. And that doesn't happen first day you meet. It doesn't happen the first time you get engaged. And it doesn't happen when you get married. It takes a lifetime of living together with your wife, your husband and wife, and they be, they become one flesh. They become almost one thought. Have you ever seen married couples? They almost know what the other one's going to say before they say it. That's what it's talking about. They become they become united in purpose, united in what they want to do and how they think about things. So that's what it means. They and that's a gr and that's a great goal for any married couple to become this one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and the wife, and they were not ashamed. Didn't even notice it. We're going to get into the fall of Adam and Eve. This is where, if you had a musical Bible, it would change. Or if it was a Western, you know, the music would change. Dun, 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 dun. This would be the place where if there was a commercial, you'd go, be able to go get something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> but here's a change. Chapter 3, verse 1. And now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Who's the serpent? Remember from uh, Revelation 12, 9? The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. That word... Subtle is like swise, sly. Hath God said, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Step number one, I've numbered the steps there. Step number one, questions the integrity and accuracy of God's word. Did God say, did God say? Remember Genesis 2, 16 and 17, remember that? The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest of it, thou shalt surely die. What does it say? Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. The woman said unto the serpent. She responds by considering what he said. Verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Is that what God said? No, no it's not what God said. She omits <coughs> the word surely, die, and then she adds words. She added the word or touch it, and least, which means perhaps or maybe. You know, it's a wishy-washy word. Remember what I said earlier this morning when I was teaching God's Word, that the Word interprets itself right where it's written? If you add to God's Word, if you guess what it is, you're changing God's Word. 
you go, well, I think it means this, without really knowing, you're, you, you're, you're putting yourself in the same position he put herself in. The woman said unto the serpent, she omits a word. That changes God's word. She adds words. Did it say anything about touching it? Wasn't even said. Or least, or maybe, or perhaps. Look at verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Whoa! Just like that. Thou shalt not surely die. The serpent said, The serpent, number five, changed the word completely to, Ye shall not surely die, or dying ye shall not die. God said, Dying you will die. The serpent saying, Dying you shall not die. Wow, it's a complete contradiction of what God said, right? God says, that day you eat of it, you're going to die. The devil says, you ain't going to die. You won't die. You don't really die. You know, the same lie is being told today. When someone's dead, you can see him there dead on the ground, or you go to a funeral, he's dead. You know what they say? They don't say he's dead. He's gone somewhere else. But you can look and see him there. It's the same lie today. You don't really die. You go somewhere else. Even people who do not believe in God say this today. They say you're reincarnated. Or you've passed over the bar. Or, you, or I believe in the afterlife. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> you know, they say different things. But hardly anybody really believes that you're dead, you're dead. And you can go to a funeral home and you can see the person there. Dead. Remember in the Apostles' Doctrine? They, and one of the things that was told is David is dead and buried. But people say you're not dead. They say you're somewhere else, smoking 10 cent cigars. Look at Genesis 3 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Well, what's the big advantage there? You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You are going to be like God. The same thing the adversary said, the devil. He said, I'm going to rise up and be God. The adversary says, you're going to be just like God. You're going to be just like God. You can be in charge of your own life. You can run your own life. There was a guy um, in my day, had a very popular song. He went, I did it my way. You know, but that's the same lie the adversary is telling you. You're in charge. You can run your own life. That's what man has been trying to do today is run his own life. You know something? Adam and Eve already knew good. They already knew good. The only thing the adversary was offering is evil. It says, and you'll be able to know good and evil. The woman says, well, I already know good. And I don't want to know evil. That's what she, that's what you would think she would have said. What do I want to know about evil? Want to see this new movie all about evil? <laughs> no thanks. I already know about good and that's enough for me. Yeah, pretty neat, huh? Look at verse 6. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eye and a tree to be desired to make one wise. And she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. She did eat, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he did eat. Now she was deceived. The adversary deceived her. He was subtle and wise. He sort of eased her into it step by step, and then she, she did it. But Adam, he wasn't deceived. She said, here you go. He goes, he goes oh, good. <laughs> I'll eat it. I'll eat it. She did eat. He ate with her. And he did eat. But remember in uh, Genesis 2.17, it says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest of thereof, thou shalt surely die. What died? That's right. Spirit. The spirit from God. A life form with a connection to God. The Bible calls the absence of spirit life as death. 
That's what he calls it. God, in God's word, if you don't have spirit life, he, God calls it, in God's word, and I'll show you this, he calls it death. It's the death of a life form. We still, Adam still had body and soul. He still had that kind of life form, but he lost his connection with God. Look at Genesis 5, just a couple pages away. Genesis 5, verse 3. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years, and begot sons in his own likeness after his own image, and he called his name Seth. Isn't that wild? In his own likeness. When God first created man, he did it in God's image. Now, Adam is making men, you know, his children after his own image. Not the image of God, but his own image. Let's go to, we're right here, but let's go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Because I told you that in the Bible, God calls the absence of spirit death. Romans chapter 5, in verse 12, and it's talking about what Adam did here, and it says, Therefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but the sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned at the similitude, or the manner of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Look at verse 16. And not as it, as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Look at verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification. Death, no spirit, Adam lost... Death is the loss of spirit. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Dead, no spirit. Adam's the one that lost it. He's, but he, he's saying, you were dead. Now, a person who is body and soul, right? He got born, he's living, he's doing a good old life, he's a good old Joe, right? The Bible says he's dead, but he's alive. He can play basketball. He can do all kinds of things, right? What's he missing? He's missing the life form called spirit, the image of God. That's what he's missing. He is body and soul, BS. Body and soul, no spirit. <laughs> you guys like that, huh? No spirit. He has no spirit. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Adam, Adam lost spirit. No longer a connection with God. Lost it. Read in verse 7. It says, And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife had hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Was Adam afraid before? No, no this is new stuff. Because I was naked and hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said, uh, Well, you know, the woman that you gave me, remember her? You gave us to me. She gave me of the tree and I did eat. I didn't really do much. I mean, she gave it to me and I ate it, but, you know, I swallowed. <laughs> but, you know, and the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? 
And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Now I want to show you here what happened. See, after figuring out what happened, after talking with Adam, God talks to Adam and says, What happened, Adam? Adam tells him. Then he went to the woman, gets it all figured out. Then God talks to the serpent in verse 14. But God never blames or gets on man's case. God goes right to the serpent. After he figures out what happened, he goes right to the serpent. Look at verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust thou shalt eat all the days of your life. That's what God said to the adversary. He didn't say that to Adam. He didn't say that to Eve. Look at verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Pretty wild, huh? I think this is unbelievable. Does the woman have seed? No, it doesn't. It comes from the male. Remember that? It comes from the male. But it says here, he's talking to the adversary, the serpent, the devil. He says, that seed of the woman is going to bruise your head. It's going to crush your head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the first time that the promise of the coming Savior is, it, is mentioned, is given right here. And it says, her seed, it is talking about the seed that was going to be created in Mary. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Keep your finger here, but look at Galatians chapter 3. Acts, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, verse 16, says, Now to Abraham and to his seeds were the promise made. He saith not to the seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is what? Christ. The seed is Christ. The seed of the woman is Christ. The promised seed since Genesis 3.15 is that Jesus Christ would come. Pretty neat. It says right there. Yeah, this is the promise, the seed, the seed of the woman, which, is, which we know to be Mary. We know it's Mary. Go back to Genesis 3.16. Now it says, unto the woman, he said, now God goes back to the woman, and he says, I will greatly mul multiply thy sorrows and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. The word sorrows there is talking about labor. She's going to have big babies, and when your woman has baby, they call it labor. She's going to be having babies. And verse 17, then he talks to Adam, and unto Adam... He said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and in sorrow or labor shalt thou eat of it all the days of your life. Before this happened, God says, He, he made everything, and He says, Good, good, good very good. Now it's cursed. Now the earth's cursed. Look at verse 18. Thorns and thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. There was no talk about thorns or thistles before. So now the earth is now cursed. It now has thorns and thistles. We know that because of what Adam did, he gave the dominion of the earth to the adversary. But you know something that's really good to think about? Before all this happens, God already makes the promise of the promise seed. First thing he does. He says, Adam, you've done this, and this is what's going to happen. But before he even mentions it, he says, but I'm sending the promise seed, Jesus Christ. Verse 19, And the sweat of thy face 
shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground for out of it it wast thou taken for dust thou art and unto dust thou shalt return and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living unto Adam also and unto his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them now how do you do that do you, you go to like a deer deer give up your skin <laughs> I think you have to kill it first right blood was shed verse 22 and the Lord God said behold the man has become as one of us to know good and evil and now at least he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken so he drove the man he drove out the man and placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life don't ask me what the tree of life is I don't know but there was a flaming sword to keep him from it turned every which way look at verse 1 of 4 Boy, I just want to point out this is the end of the original or the paradise administration when man is kicked out of the garden of Eden there are two types of death one spirit the other is of body and soul that death and in chapter 4 verse 1 and Adam knew his new Eve his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and she said ah I have gotten the man from the Lord pretty happy there <laughs> I have gotten the man from the Lord what did she think she thought she had the promised seed she thought she had the promised seed look at uh, in chapter 4 verse 25 uh, by the way Cain was the first murderer he wasn't the promised seed verse 25 and Adam knew his wife again and she bare a son and called his name Seth for God she said had appointed me another seed instead of Abel whom Cain slew and Seth and to Seth and to him also was born a son and he called his name Enos then began men to call upon the name of the Lord and this here this verse here where it says then began men to call upon the name of the Lord to call their God small g who was the devil by the name of the Lord look how soon after they are kicked out of the Garden of Eden that that men started calling the adversary by the name of the Lord This concludes the series on the first three chapters of Genesis. In the next episode, we're going to get into the mission of Jesus Christ. We'll see what Jesus Christ was called to do, how Jesus Christ redeemed mankind from everything that Adam lost, how he did everything that God asked him to do, how he performed it all, he was our perfect Savior.